Good evening and welcome to the final session of our 2023 Bible Conference Revival with Graham Stanford. It is great to be here tonight and uh, thank you for those who are, are coming, maybe for the first evening session. It's great to have you with us and this is your first session at all. We're really excited to be here. So, um, Graham's been sharing great things with us all weekend and he's been doing uh, fun stuff in our area all week, uh, recording podcasts, uh, a couple of podcasts over in Lincoln, uh, speaking to the Berean pastors in our region one day, and uh, sharing with ministries here at Plasma Bible Church throughout the week. So it's been a full, full week with Graham, and we're uh, thankful for how God has, has worked and, and uh, shown himself through our time with him. Let's pray as we prepare to sing and get started. Lord, thank you so much that we can hear from you through your word, through your people, through prayer, and even through circumstances. You make yourself known to us. Lord, thank you for making yourself known to us through Graham this weekend. And Lord, we pray for our time tonight in your word that you would speak powerfully and do your work in our lives for your glory and for the expansion of your kingdom. And we thank you for bringing us all here. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please stand with me if you're able, and let's start our evening off with a little bit of worship.
our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. Well, I 
think it's the first. I think he wants to involve all of us in his plan. That's one of the reasons that we're thinking about and talking about revival while Graham is here. Our hearts need to be enlivened to be able to participate with God in what he's doing. So thank you for being here tonight. And Graham, please come up and share with us this evening. I've asked Michael to do a reading. If he, if he would be good enough to do that now, sure. and, uh, that would be great. But good, good evening, everybody. <laughs> it's Isaiah 64. We're going to read the whole chapter. Isaiah 64. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear, no eye has seen a God besides you who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry, and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind, Take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are the work, we are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O oh Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. Your holy cities have become a wilderness. Zion has become a wilderness. Jerusalem, a desolation. Our holy and beautiful house where our fathers praised you has been burned by fire, and all our pleasant places have become ruins. Will you restrain yourself at these, time, at these things, O Lord? Will you keep silent and afflict us so terribly? Well, as you say, it, it's uh, been great being here these few days, uh, getting to know you folk a bit more, and uh, thank you for your prayers and encouragement, and uh, it's, uh, it's been tremendous. It's great to see the young people here, and uh, it's also exciting to know that several of the young people have given their lives to Christ. Uh, uh, we had about five made professions this afternoon in the youth work, so we thank God for that. Uh, they're the church tomorrow. And it's great to have a, a good number of them here with us tonight. So thank, thanks for that. Um, I just want to make a prayer. I want you to make a prayer with me for God to touch your heart tonight and to, to do a work in your life. We are here not to be spectators of what's going on. We're here to, to meet with God. And that's an awesome thing. And I just pray with me now that God will touch your life and bless you while you're here under his word. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that it's living, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's powerful, it can penetrate deep within us. And we pray that it will do that tonight. We thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. And we pray that he will fill this building and also fill our hearts with his wonderful presence and speak O oh lord tonight amen i want to speak from that chapter that michael uh, michael read to us chapter 64 it's a prayer for revival that chapter and uh, i just want to read the first verse again oh that you would rend the heavens and come down 
that the mountains would tremble before you. Here Isaiah deeply desires God to come amongst his people with great power. The first word is, oh, oh, this, uh, and, and it's, it's a cry of a man's heart waiting and looking and longing for God. Um, this is not a prayer for blessing, but uh, actually it's a prayer for God himself would come down in a powerful way and touch the people with great power. He desires that God the Holy Spirit would come down and manifest his presence and power. That's what happens in a revival. God comes down. And three times in that uh, if verse, uh, um, three verses, um, three times it says, come down, come down, come down. And we want God to come down tonight upon our lives and minister to us. It was um, in a small cottage in Lewis, in the village of Barras, there lived two elderly women, Peggy and Christine Smith. Peggy was 84 and blind. Christine was 82 and doubled up with arthritis. They both spoke Gaelic, neither could attend the place of public worship. They both cried like Isaiah that God would come down and touch their island in a powerful way. And as they were praying, uh, uh, God gave them a promise. And this was the promise, I will pour water on the thirsty and floods on the dry ground. They pleaded night and day that God would do this. One night they were given a revelation that a revival was coming to the church of the fathers. And they were, they, they, this church would be crowded again with young people. Duncan Campbell was called to preach in the island and there was a, a mighty visitation of God. The only thing that you could explain what happened in the days that followed was that God himself came down upon that island. In 1904, uh, Wales was a flame. The spiritual condition at that time was low, church attendance was poor, sin abounded, suddenly like an unexpected tornado, the Spirit of God swept over the land. The churches were so crowded that multitudes could not get in. Meetings lasted from 10 a.m. in the morning till 12 p.m. at night. Infidels were converted. Drunkards, thieves, gamblers were saved. Debts were repaid. In five weeks, 20,000 um, joined the church. God came down. The Holy Spirit has been poured out on the day of Pentecost for the church and is always ready to come down and minister and move in our churches, in our land. Um, so I thought it'd be good to look at what we should expect from this chapter. We can learn what, when God does come down. And uh, I, I've got one or two things that I would like to share with you, some of the characteristics of revival. Number one, there will be a deep sense of all that the mountains would tremble before you a sense of the presence of god always brings awe uh, the early church devoted themselves to teaching and it says this in the uh, book of acts when the pentecostal flame came down upon uh, the, the people everyone it says was filled with awe. There was a tremendous sense that God was there. And it made the people with awe and reverence in, their, in, in the presence of God. Isaiah desired such a, a presence that even mountains that stood firm and serene would tremble before them. Um, so... Um, Revival, as Duncan Campbell put it, was describes revival as simply a, a whole community 
saturated with the presence of God. Uh, so that is uh, the first thing that I think I would expect to see. Oh. Then the second thing, uh, uh, characteristic, is a sense of we would see our sin and our sinfulness before a holy God. There will be a, a true and deep conviction of sin. There, this was the, a central characteristic of all the genuine revivals. Uh, the, 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 the people just, just confessed that, 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 that they were evil and wanted God to deal with them and, and forgive them. People would run out sometimes from the meeting place so convicted, didn't know what to do with themselves and, uh, and um, they, 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 they cried to God to have mercy on them and forgive them. You see a sin when God's come down. Like Isaiah, of course, in, this, uh, in his own life, in chapter 6 of this book, it said, In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on the throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were the seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling out one to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. And at the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the threshold shook and trembled and was filled with smoke. And woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among unclean people. And my, my eyes have seen the King, the Lord, the Almighty. Sense of his sin, I've I got, I got an uncleanness, he said, as, God, uh, as he saw God and met with God. Now, um, uh, I just want to ask tonight that might, might, you might let God search your heart and see if there's anything that God sees in your life that you need to repent of and uh, deal with. Don't keep sin unconfessed. Don't hide sin and put it under there and, and, and hide it. That's a terrible thing to do. It can make you sick, ill. Um, people who, we remember when David committed adultery. For one year, he hid his sin. He kept it out of sight. He buried it. He wouldn't bring it to God until about a year later. And he did then bring it to God. But that year was a terrible year in his life. He was unwell. He, was, uh, he just had no peace in his life he, 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 until he brought his sin out to God and asked God to deal with it. I wonder if there's something that you need forgiveness for tonight. God's ready to forgive you. So it tells us that in Psalms, it's a lovely, lovely phrase in, in the Psalms. It says, he's ready to forgive. God literally is on his tiptoes to forgive you and to clean your life up. So don't bury your sins. Bring them to God and bring them tonight to God. Um, so that's another thing. There'll be a, an awareness of personal sin in the light of his holiness. And then thirdly, that there will be a new powerful flame will, will, will blaze our hearts. Verse 2, as when fire sets the twigs ablaze and causes water to boil. He was really saying, I want such a presence of God that there will be a fire. <laughs> uh, our hearts will be made to blaze and boil. <laughs> Cold, dry twigs set ablaze. Cold water made boiling. The picture is that of a campfire full in full blaze, boiling the cauldron of hot water. When God comes, dryness and coldness vanish. That's what will go from your life. Dryness and coldness. People become fervent for God. You cannot remain lukewarm in his presence. Cold hearts will be set ablaze with his love and power. Fire symbols purity in the presence of God. 
On the day of Pentecost, the flame divided itself in several tongues of fire and rested on each person there. Uh, they saw, verse 3 of Acts 2, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came on each of them and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. The fire began to rest on people's hearts. Do we want God to do that? Do we want him to fire our lives up and set us ablaze? Fire would first of all burn the impurities from our lives and then set us ablaze for God. They, they come together. Sin goes and the power of God excites us, infuses us and puts uh, life and meaning into our lives. Um, there was an old great um, guy, General Booth, who, who preached the cause for God to come down on people and touch their lives. And, and he wrote uh, a great song. I don't think we sing it today in churches. I've sung it just occasionally in churches. And it's, uh, it, this is the words of it. Let me just read. To burn up every trace of sin... Uh, bring light and glory in. The revolu revolution now begin. Send the fire today. Send the fire today. And uh, it's a, it was a great song to ask God to put that fire upon the people's lives, upon our lives, and, and set them ablaze for God. I, I want one thing I want after this uh, weekend uh, is uh, for Christians in this fellowship to be ablaze for God moving out with a fire burning in the heart to reach the lost, to uh, touch people's lives. J Charles Wesley um, wrote that great hymn, O Thou Who Camest From Above, the pure celestial fire impart, kindle a flame of sacred love on the mean altar of my heart. There, let it for your glory burn, with inextinguishable blaze. So um, that's uh, what will happen if you let God loose in your life. He'll set it on fire. <laughs> Not literally, of course. <laughs> and there's one guy once in the old meetings when they used to have those gas uh, lights uh, and he kept saying, send the fire, send the fire. And he stood up once and <laughs> caught his head on <laughs> the gas thing. <laughs> Smoked and they had to close the meeting. <laughs> He got the fire. No, no, it's not that. It's not that. It, 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 it's, it's a new warmth in our hearts. Fire that make you warm. Christians should be the warmest people on the planet. With the, with, the, with the Spirit working in our heart, it makes us warm. Warm to people. When somebody comes into your house, do they get warm? Do they sense God of your presence is there? Well, that's what God wants to do. Um... So, so let's pray for that for our lives. So there's some of the things. Now let's uh, look at some of the principles for God to work. Some of the principles. First of all, we must wait on the Lord. Here is Isaiah. He's desiring God to come down. And what's he doing? He's praying. And um, I want to say this. No prayer, no revival. All the great revivals... It's always started when people started praying and seeking God. Um, so no prayer, no revival. We should seek God and, and, and wait for him. It says, verse 4 of our chapter, Since ancient time, no one has heard, nor here perceived, nor I has seen uh, beside you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. God, God acts. You pray, God acts. This is why prayer is so vital for our lives. When you pray, you're bringing God into the situation. And God acts, God moves. God's a God who's longing to move in our lives. And so um, we must wait on God. Uh, and um, there has got to... Uh, secondly, one, one of the conditions is, of course, purity. And I, I can't stress this enough, I, I've said it already, shared how important it is that we clean, we pure, and uh, we ask God to, to take sin from our lives and give us pure hearts, uh, and um, uh, 
It says in the scriptures, if I, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. He, he can't answer your prayers if there's a sin there that you've not confessed. He will not hear me. Oswald Smith in the book, The Revival We Need, said there is only one thing that can block up the channel and choke God's power that is sin. That's the thing that stops revival. That's the thing that stops God's working. When sin is there, God can't do another thing in your life for you cannot be blessed until you move that sin and take it to him and ask him to cleanse you from it. Some might need to do that tonight. So, um, what, what's in the great revivals, what, what's some of the things that they, they pray for God to deal with? And I've listed them here, uh, some questions we need to ask. Have we forgiven everybody? Is there anybody that we all, you know, a grudge against? Do we get angry? Do we get impatient and irritable? Is there pride and self-righteousness in our heart? Have we been dishonest? Have we stolen? At the uh, Keswick Convention where the great speakers spoke, the, uh, the post office ran out of uh, postal orders so people wanted to send money that they owed after the convention. These were all Christian people and there was queues outside the post office after the, the meeting. Do you rob God and not bring your tithes and offerings? That can stop blessing. And that happens, uh, that happens in, the, in those verses at the end of the Bible uh, where God says, bring your tithes and offerings. Have you been gossiping, unkind? That needs cleansing if you've been saying unkind things about people. Are you guilty of lustful thoughts or unclean actions? Do you watch things on television that you, know, you would be ashamed of if people saw you? But you're watching it. Are you prayerless? Are you neglect neglecting God's word? Have you failed to confess Christ openly? Are you guilty of unbelief? Are you hindering re revival by uh, your lifestyle? There's no reality. You say you're a Christian, you come along, you sing the hymns, uh, but you go home and you're a different person. And your wife knows it, or your husband. The sharpness and bitterness in the home. You need to confess that before God. That is not right in God's eyes. He wants love in our homes. He wants peace in our homes. He wants our marriages to be blessed. He wants to bring joy into our homes. We need to have clean hearts. We need to bring out anything. Is God pointing his finger? Or as I speak, is he laying hold of something that you need to deal with to get right with God and to know God's blessing? For your life. Um, and thirdly, thirdly, we should acknowledge our apathy and lay hold of God. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you. We've not only just got to look at our sin, but we've got to simply get hold of God Himself. Ask God to be close to you. Ask Him to fill your home. Ask Him to to, you know, to, 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 to know you, as you're going to work on Monday morning, ask God to be present with you in a very real way and, um, and strive to lay hold on. We live today in the age of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> God has done all the work on the cross made to make, make possible for men to be clean and then on the day of Pentecost, poured out his, his spirit and that is for our lives that, that is for us to draw from so that out of our innermost being shall flow rivers of living water through our lives so um, that is one of the things that uh, we will no one calls no one strives to lay hold of me um, 
So, one more, we should desire to do what is right. We should desire to do what is right. Verse 5, for you come, you come to the help of those who gladly do right. Uh, that's what Isaiah said. You, you, you come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remembers your ways. Righteousness exalts a nation, it says in fact. What we want is a body of men and women and boys and girls with a passion, a passion to do right in their lives and to do right in, in their service for God. Uh, God will meet the people who have a passion to do right. Uh, it says in Hosea, Sow for yourselves righteousness. Reap the fruit of unfailing love. Break up the, plowed the, the unplowed ground, for it's time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers righteousness on you. God wants you to be a righteous person. Living to do what's right. I have a great friend, you call him Derek. And I love him. He's, he's a tremendous friend. And he's a great guy to have in a meeting as well. Because we decided, deciding, well, what shall we do? And he would all often say, let's do what's right. That has led us in many meetings making important decisions. Let's do the right thing, he says. And uh, that is a, a great thing that uh, we should desire uh, if we want God to do great things. For in that same hymn that I quoted out of, uh, the, the, the song in the revival of the 18th century, um, General Booth wrote these words, Strength to always do what's right, grace to conquer in the fight, for power to walk the world in white, send the fire today, send the fire today. So um, there are some of the things uh, that I brought to us tonight that uh, we should be seeking God for. And I, I thought it might be a, a nice way as we come to our end of the time is, is to give an opportunity for people, if they want to, to come. As, as people go out, we can have the same little rule. But people can just come here who, who, who want God to come down upon their life in a powerful way, in a new way, in a deeper way, for people to confess if there's any sin that they've done. Uh, before the Lord, just to pray with God and ask him to come on your life. And then, of course, I always finish this up. I made a little pact, actually, with the Lord, and I've been doing it for several years, that wherever I go, wherever I go, I will always give the opportunity for anybody who is in my hearing to become, to become a Christian that day. And so I'm going to give... Uh, that opportunity to any ear who is not yet a Christian. You've been to the meetings, you've heard about God's word, God's wonderful love, the cross. I've mentioned the cross virtually in every meeting where Jesus says, I'll meet you at the cross and I'll forgive you at the cross and I'll give you a new life at the cross, so come to the cross. And so if you're not a Christian tonight, why don't you ask Jesus? to come into your life. It'd be a lovely way to finish this. Uh, I know some of the young folk did that this afternoon. It was lovely to see them. And they were very genuine and they asked Christ to come in their lives. And he came in, I'm sure of that. He always did. Do you know it says in the Bible that he says, I, 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 no, I will, uh, whoever calls, this is what it says in the Bible, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. No doubt about it. You call, you cry, ask God to save you, and he will. He promises to do that. And those who have already called, I want you to know, he's answered your prayer. <laughs> you, you are saved. You can say, I'm going to heaven now. You know, I belong to God. And uh, it's, it's a thrilling thing to know Jesus as Savior. I'm so glad he saved me. So maybe there's some, they are not saved yet. Don't, don't let this weekend meeting go without you getting right with God and asking Jesus to take your sin away and come and live in your heart. So you come to the front with the others as well. And just let one of us know that you want Jesus to come into your heart. We'll pray for you. Okay, that sounds a good deal to me.
So are we going to have a song and then, yeah, yeah so over to you, Michael, if you could uh, take on. Yeah. As we mentioned each uh, evening that we've been together, uh, we want to be a blessing to Graham as, uh, as he's been a blessing to us. If you would like to give a gift for Graham this evening, you can do that. We're going to have a couple of songs here in a minute. And uh, during those songs, you can certainly come forward, as, as Graham mentioned, for prayer, to receive Christ, uh, to, to ask God to fill you um, as well as himself. But um, if you're going to bring a, a gift tonight, I would ask you to do it pretty quickly um, so that we can, before Graham leaves tomorrow, get it to him um, in a check form. So let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your word that just shows us ourselves clearly and shows us you clearly. Lord, I thank you that that we can hear from you about issues in our lives that maybe we have been ignoring or have rejected, but Lord, once again, you are not content to leave us unchanged. You want us to have Jesus live his life in us and to show himself through us. And Lord, a life like that, you know, will never remain unchanged. So, Lord, do your work in our hearts now as we are considering how to respond and, Lord, draw those who are lost into your family, into your kingdom. And, Lord, thank you for the, the blessing of being able to share this time with our brother Graham from England. And, and uh, we do pray that you will help us all to respond in obedience to the call that you have put on our lives. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Anywhere and you need prayer as they're singing these songs, just come and stand here. Then you can sit down after the song's finished and we'll, we'll pray for you. Okay. I 
song, uh, just to say I'd like you to do something that Dwight Moody did when he preached right across America how he finished, and he would say this, he put his hands up like this to the count, and he'd just say this come to Jesus that's all he'd say, come to Jesus and my invitation to you tonight is come to Jesus so coming forward, you're coming to Jesus, if, you co if you're coming as a Christian, you're coming to ask him to to fill you with his life so he can live in you. If you're not a Christian, come to Jesus and you'll be welcomed into his kingdom. So just take that step and, and I'd get those who come and give their life to Christ tonight, I've got my little booklet I'd like to give you. So just come and ask me for one of those and that'll be great. Okay, thank you.
great. Come on up. Um, Sam has the booklet for you, but we want to make sure that you have that opportunity to be a follower of Jesus. You are welcome to take off now or come in and say thank you to Graham also. Oh, 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 oh. Graham, we uh, have a gift for you. Uh, just thank you, and we have other gifts for you coming later too. <laughs> but, uh, uh, just a remembrance of our time together. So thank you, Graham. <laughs> you are